welcome. We have a small group tonight, and that is intentional. Most of you may not realize that, but it was very intentional. I actually intentionally asked that they not really market this too heavily. There is a uh, group of people coming in from a church that were wanting to be trained. And when they said they wanted to come in and be trained, I said, okay, tell you what, um, I'm going to take advantage of this and pull together some of the people from our church and things like that and just some word of mouth stuff just to kind of pull a small group together. And I wanted to keep it small so that there'd be a good ability for you guys to get your questions answered. And the last couple of times that, that I've done a, any type of speaking engagement, we've had like six to 800, at which point it really gets a little tough to do Q&A. And given the fact that this was really designed for one, another church, a small church in the community to be able to get educated, I didn't want it getting so overwhelming in size that they couldn't get their questions answered. So if you're going, why is it so much quieter? That was intentional. So thank you everyone for coming tonight. I'm Pam Holloway. Um, this happens to be my church, The Road, and I'm very thankful for the fact that they're allowing me to do this from right here. We are gonna be recording this tonight, so I am gonna ask that you hold all questions till the end when we actually will do a Q&A. The reason why we're recording this is I'm really trying to get so much better at when we put information out that you guys can say, wow, you missed this presentation. Well, here it is on this website. Watch it. Okay, so the information I put out tonight will be on the website on healthrecoveryministry.org website that you see up there. So please share it. You're welcome to share it. The more people who are educated, the more we can do. So... With that, um, if you don't mind, I'm gonna go ahead and take a moment to pray and then we're gonna go ahead and get started. Heavenly Father, we just thank you and praise you for the fact that you are in charge. You promise us that we are beautifully and wonderfully made. And Lord, we praise you and thank you for that. And Lord, we just ask that you just give each individual here tonight your peace that surpasses all understanding, your joy, Lord, and just your wisdom. For you did not give us a spirit of fear, but of power, of love, and a sound mind. In the name of your sweet son, Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay. So first question I have, just to get an idea of who's here in the room, who here has heard me speak on the topic of COVID prevention and intervention before now? Okay, so a fair amount of you. I got good news for you. This is not a repeat, okay? Um, we are gonna be looking at this specifically from the elements of what's changed. There's a lot that has changed, particularly since last May. We are now dealing with the Delta variant and that has some uniquenesses to it. And so we are gonna cover in some of those things. But the first thing that, as I was preparing this and looking at getting it put together that was really put on my heart was something that was specifically from scripture. And it was in Jeremiah. And a lot of you know the, fa the, the phrase from Jeremiah 29, 11, but we're gonna go a little bit more in depth here. For this is what the Lord says, when 70 years for Babylon are complete, I will attend to you and will confirm my promise concerning you to restore you to this place. God's not just restoring a place. He's restoring his temple. And we are his temple. So as we walk through this time as as crazy as everything looks like it is with COVID and everything else, just realize that we're actually going through a restoration process. And sometimes in the process of restoration, you got to do a little deconstruction work in order to be able to do the restoration work. We got to clean the stuff out and sometimes we have to do a little bit of new building. And that's really what I think the Lord's doing with us right now. For I know the plans I have for you. This is the Lord's declaration. 
plans for your well-being, not for disaster, to give you a future and a hope. You will call to me and come and pray to me, and I will listen to you. Step one to any restoration, going before the Lord, hearing his voice, calling to him and praying. To think that we're going to be able to dig ourselves out of what we find ourselves in is sheer folly. The only way we're coming out of this situation is by the Lord and the Lord alone. And by our doing our part in partnering with him to make that happen. It's the same thing with the human body. You will seek me and find me when you search for me with all of your heart. All of your heart. Healing starts with seeking the Lord with all of our heart. I have seen numerous people try to battle COVID strictly from a physical perspective. It doesn't work. COVID is a spiritual and an emotional battle as well as a physical battle. Circumcise your heart, get before the Lord. It goes much better, much more quickly. And that means getting rid of the fear. If fear is in control, God's not. And when we make our decisions from a standpoint of fear, when we're reacting to fear, it's really hard to heal. There's a saying, what we focus on gets bigger. When we focus on fear, the injury, the illness, the pain, it all gets bigger. We've got to turn our focus back to the Lord get our praise and worship game on and find things to be joyful about. Amen. Step one for each and every person in this room, find three things to be thankful for every day before you go to bed at night. Note three things you are thankful for. They can even be challenges. God teaches us a lot through challenges, but just find three things to be thankful for. And it's okay if you got something hard. Just tell him, hey, this one's really hard. Let him know that. And then when you get up in the morning, every morning when I get up, it's Lord, let me accomplish what you want me to accomplish today to your glory. Praise you, Father, for another morning. Just show me who I can love. Or if it's just take some private time one-on-one -on -one with you, which I'll be very upfront about, I'm not getting nearly enough of lately. And if I neglect that, everything else starts going downhill. This is the Lord's declaration. And I will restore your fortunes and gather you from all the nations and places where I banished you. This is the Lord's declaration. I will restore you to, to the place from which I deported you. We are going to go through a restoration process, each and every one of us. And here's the real key. God's word tells us in all things, trials, struggles, emptiness, pain, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. Romans 8, 37. Most people would look at that first and think that conquerors is the most important part of that. It's not. It's the word in. We're going to go through trials. We're going to be in them, but he's in them with us. We're not alone. So with that, some of the information I'm going to go through tonight may feel a little daunting. I really want you guys to realize every single step of the way as we go through some of this information. He's right here with us. He's in it. He knew we were going to go through this time. He's equipped each one of us to go through it. And not only that, we were all born specifically for this time. And we each have a mission to accomplish. 
The sooner we realize that and we figure out what our mission is and we get lightning focused on our mission, all of a sudden this actually starts becoming kind of fun. <laughs> you look at it, you're like, oh, it's an adventure. Not always fun, but it's an adventure. And at the end, you know your destination. So at the end of the ride, you'll be able to get to your destination, look around and say, that was an adventure. If any of you have ever seen Lord of the Rings or The Hobbit with Bilbo Baggins, and Bilbo Baggins really did understand what was a good adventure. Sometimes we just need to look at what we're going through as if it's just a good adventure. Okay, next slide, please. Or do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have from God, and you are not your own? For you are bought at a price. Therefore, for glorify God in your body and your spirit, which are God's. That right there, for anyone who's going through pressure right now to be taking the vaccination, what I call the shot, is all you need to know. If the Lord has told you via the Holy Spirit not to take it, that it is verboten, then it is verboten. So for any of you who are going through religious exemption issues right now, that's a key verse that I would be hanging on right there. Obviously walk through that with the Lord and, and figure it out with him. But the way I look at it is this doesn't belong to me, it belongs to him. So I have to take care of it the way he tells me to take care of it. Because it's his. He was just gracious enough to let me live in it for a while. Right? Okay, next slide. These are the three key things that cause dis-ease. There's stress overload, nutritional deficiencies, and environmental toxin overload. This is something that, you know, many of you guys have seen this slide before. We will be doing an entire conference on this on November 5th and November 6th, right here at the Road Church, right here in this room. Um, we have three individuals coming, two very prominent physicians. One is world-renowned. And we will be covering specifically this topic throughout that entire conference. It will be very practical. It will be very hands-on. Um, word will be going out on that very soon. If you sign up for healthrecoveryministry.org, you will get the notice about it. Also, the Road Church will be putting out notices about it too. But it's the evening of November 5th, a Friday evening, and then all day on Saturday, November 6th. So go ahead and mark your calendars for that one. The real key though is this stress component. If there's something that I've learned during COVID, it is the fact that the, the mental emotional is what opens the door to the toxin buildup faster than anything. The body holds on to emotions. There is a cellular level that actually, where emotions can get trapped and it leads to toxin buildup. And recently I've been able to work with some clients and I've seen some most amazing things. Two of them happen to be in their 70s and 80s. Typically by the time someone's in their 70s and 80s, I find five to six markers for cancer in the mesenchyme, in the extracellular fluid. In both of these individuals, well, the 84-year-old, I only found one. I'll tell you, most of the teenagers these days, I'm finding four to five. I only found one in this individual. 
another individual who is truly one of an individual that many of you would know as a true prayer warrior. That individual only had two markers. And oh, by the way, they had a spouse die just a year ago and they only had two markers. What did both these individuals have in common? They both have the most amazing prayer life. They both have the most amazing walk with the Lord. And here's the really key part about that prayer life and that walk with the Lord. They lay it down. And when they lay it down, they lay it down. They don't do what I often am guilty of. Oh, let me just pick that right back up. They truly lay it down. This mental, emotional part of being able to lay down that stress, give it to God, and leave it with him is absolutely a key component of maintaining your health. Other than that, absolutely. We've got to feed this body good food and focus on the nutritional things, which means trying to avoid foods that have high levels of Roundup glyphosate in them, which does mean know your local farmer is the best source for your food supply. Secondly would be certified organic not as good. And then obviously just really avoiding what they call the dirty dozen, which are like strawberries. One of my favorite foods are one of the dirtiest foods out there unless they're organic. Who here doesn't love strawberries, right? But you really do have to be careful with where you are sourcing your food these days. We are coming up with really high levels of glyphosate roundup on our food supply, and that destroys gut microbiome. Your body actually loves diversity. The more diversity in your microbiome, the healthier you are. And these days we're running into lots of issues where our diversity is being destroyed between the antibiotics. I mean, how many people, you don't have to raise your hands actually. How many people get COVID and go get a Z pack? Oh, there's another hit on your microbiome. How many people got COVID and took steroids? Oh, there's another hit on your microbiome. As much as possible, we need to try to avoid those things that destroy the microbiome and instead do everything we can to support it. How can we support it? We can support it through things like cultured foods, doing things like sauerkraut, but it has to be the refrigerated kind. It has to be a living organism. So like many of you have seen um, the kombuchas, the kefirs, the sauerkrauts, the kimchi, all of those beautiful fermented foods, they all feed your microbiome. For the majority of the population, they're absolutely wonderful. There are some very specific instances where you need to avoid those for a little while. People who've had an issue with chronic inflammatory response syndrome, mycotoxins, things like that, sometimes they have to stay away from them. But for the majority of the population, they're actually quite good. The other thing is this toxin overload. Looking at the quality of the air you breathe in your home. Our homes are really tightly built today. And unfortunately, we often love to use scented things in our homes. A lot of those scented things are absolutely toxic to our bodies, and we really need to avoid them. The other thing that we need to look at is what are we using for household cleaners? Again, especially because our, most of our houses are so tight, those cleaners actually stay in that space. And a lot of times, we are our own worst enemies. Um, for women, if you use perfume instead of an essential oil, um, that can be a problem. Using things like the standard deodorant that we all see on the store shelves, that's aluminum in there that is that antiperspirant. That's extremely toxic. Those are all things that we've really got to be careful of because it's overloading our system. And while in the past we could detox all that stuff and we could handle it and it'd be okay, we can't now. Now it's gotten so heavily prolific and we've got so much toxin burden in between the things that we don't see like electromagnetic frequencies from all of our cell phones and all of the 5G and everything else 
and all of the other stressors we've got coming in, the body's finally going, okay, <laughs> can you give me a break? And so it makes it kind of tough for the body to recover. So we really do need to take a good look at these types of things. Water is a huge one. If you can source your water from a well or, you know, make sure it's tested, or spring water is the absolute best, but not anything out of a plastic bottle. Even though it says that, that bottle is phthalate free, it's still full of toxins. And those microplastics really do cause additional stress and damage to the body. Next slide, please. This right here is kind of hard to see. All this slide deck, by the way, will be on healthrecoverymistry.org um, here in just a couple of days. Uh, and so you'll be able to download all these slides and be able to share them. This is the three stages of what happens with COVID. Stage one is where we wanna catch it. That is typically in the first one to three days by the typical cycle. The one thing we are finding is that Delta is being kind of funky. I've, I've seen people hit it really hard and fast and drop like a rock. And then I've hear, seen people who are just kind of malingering their way along, think they just had a little sinus infection, don't do anything about it, and then all of a sudden find that they're crashing. So it's getting a little weird. It's getting harder to type, right? The second stage typically occurs around day three. That first stage there, you will see fatigue, body aches, brain fog, fever, sore throat, stuffy nose. Some people don't get a fever. So just be aware of that until much later. Some people do get the loss of smell, taste. Others never lost their smell or taste. Some get nausea and diarrhea. Some get the dry cough. Some don't get the dry cough until later. Here's the funky part about Delta. The funky part about Delta is what is the source of where Delta is coming from. I keep hearing time and time again, oh, I already had COVID, so I'm okay. This can't be COVID. Not true. Patient zero here at the Road Church had COVID in November, had a really hard case of COVID in November. In May, that same individual came down with it again and was so sick that they went to the urgent care, urgent care sent them back home. They then went to the ER, crashing. ER said, you haven't crashed enough, sent them back home. His wife was absolutely distraught. And a mutual friend called me up asking me for the dose of what to give for ivermectin as a horse paste warmer. And that's how I found him, or he found me. And we rapidly started on his case using the very same protocol that you see here. Um, and we were able to reverse him. His O2 sats did drop down into the 80s. I've since then had people whose O2 sats have dropped all the way down to the 70s. Every single one of them has recovered. In fact, one of them's here tonight. I won't point them out, but there is uh, probably one of the tougher cases, if not the toughest one, is actually sitting in this room tonight. So I'm very, very happy to say we've had, still maintaining our 100% success rate. Glory to God. It's all him. It's all him. So what ends up happening is, is if you don't catch this in phase one and you move into phase two, that's when it starts to get a little dicey. And that's where we see that cytokine components start with that cytokine injury, okay? You've probably, some of you may have heard the term cytokine storm. Has anyone here ever heard the term cytokine storm? Okay, a few of you have, okay. Cytokine storm is when the body gears up and says, I am gonna go after this and I'm gonna take care of it. And it goes into a hyperimmune response to attempt to heal. 
But instead, what it does is create such a storm of a response that you'll actually find yourself drowning in your own fluid in your lungs. Not what we want to see happen. So if people move from stage one to stage two, where they're actually starting to get that chest pressure, what we call that shortness of breath and that difficulty breathing, that is when we're like, uh-oh, we really need to get on top of this quick. At this stage, I really encourage people, and this is, you know, particularly around day five, okay, if you're going on a typical progression. I want them to start two medications besides the protocol, the normal protocol, which you'll see. It's a good idea to start Claritin, which is an H1 histamine blocker, and Pepsid AC, which is an H2 histamine blocker. What that does is it helps shut down that cytokine response. These are both over-the-counter, very inexpensive medications that we often see used for allergies. But what we're doing is we're shutting down that cytokine response so that we don't slide into phase three. And phase three is where it gets danger, dangerous. That's when we slide into thrombosis. That's late stage. That's when we start seeing blood clotting. That's when we start seeing the people hitting the hospital doors, being admitted, and ending up on high flow oxygen, if not intubated and put on respirators, which we don't want, okay? People have recovered from that, but it gets much more difficult at that point. You'll see severe chest pain and heaviness, shortness of breath, blood clots. You'll see low O2 stats and high heart rate. The clue to the fact that the O2 sats are about to drop is you'll always see the heart rate jump up first. It will jump up over 100 and it will stay there because the heart's doing all the work it can to try to keep oxygen going to the body. And then you'll find that the O2 sats will start sagging down. You'll see them drop 92, 90, 88, 86, 80. And all of a sudden you're like, whoa. So that's when we're starting to slide into that stage three. People at this level typically need oxygen. They will become very fatigued very quickly.